So this morning, I'm going to talk to us about knowing God intimately. All of us as believers, we want to grow in our knowledge of the Lord. How can I get to know God more? And uh, that is, uh, I, I believe, the cry of everyone's heart. We want to know him more. So I just want to mention just two things about uh, the outcomes, the fruits, or uh, uh, the benefits of uh, knowing God. But then I want to focus in on the how. What must I do in order to know God? And I just want to highlight a few things that will encourage us and maybe stir us up uh, to pursue God even more intently. First of all, knowing God intimately is a source of our strength. Uh, Daniel 11, verse 32, we know these scriptures. It says, you know, uh, the latter part of that verse, it says, the people who know their God will be strong and do great exploits. Fruitfulness comes from knowing God, uh, from knowing him intimately. Jesus put it in John 15, verse 5. He said, you know, if you abide in me and I abide in you, you will bear much fruit. So this fruitfulness in ministry comes from knowing God, from that place of intimacy. So the question we want to answer today as we just spend some time in the Word of God is, you know, how can I grow in my knowledge of God? What I want to do is highlight, remind us of some ways in which we pursue God. How am I supposed to pursue God? Just reminders. Number one, we must pursue Him passionately. We must pursue him passionately. Now when I use the word passionately, it means with zeal, with enthusiasm, with some excitement, uh, with some emotion. Secondly, you know, to, uh, to, we must pursue him intently. Intently. Intent means with focus, with a single-minded devotion. Focus him intently. Focus shifts or determines our priorities. So when you're focused on God, then that becomes your priority. Focus also means we avoid distractions. When you're focused on something, you're able to say no to things that would distract you or want to take away your time, you begin to focus. It avoids distractions. You're gripped by what you focus. Focus also strengthens consistency. How can you be consistent in this? Because of focus. If you're focused on something, you'll be consistent in it. If you are, you know, shifting your focus, shifting focus causes distractions. The number three, we must pursue him earnestly. Earnestly means with sincerity. You're pursuing him because he is your desire. We pursue God sacrificially. So when you and I want to pursue God, it's going to cost us something. And for us, in our lives, it, 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 it calls for sacrifice because there are so many things that will want to consume our time. But we make space. We push things aside and says, I'm sacrificing this time because I want to be with the Father. We must pursue Him wholeheartedly. That means with everything we've got, we have to pursue Him wholeheartedly with all that is in you. Another important thing about pursuing God is we pursue Him humbly. That means we come with awe and reverence before God. Now, why is humility so important? Because the scriptures teach us in James 4, 6, that God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. The last one is this, that when we pursue him, we must pursue him with expectantly. So when you go into a time of prayer, when you go into a time of reading the word, you go with expectation, I'm going to encounter God. I might read five verses, but I'm expecting God to speak to me. I'm expecting God to come and whisper into my heart. That's expectation. So when we pursue him, we pursue him with expectation. The grace to pursue him is given to us by God himself. God empowers us by his grace to pursue him in this manner. I want to encourage you to grow in your intimacy with God. Desire to know him more. Knowing him more is when you become more like him.